does. Abide by what you agreed to, so. Tanner, can I cap on that? Do you mind? Yep. Cap it up. For I posted the picture in the chat of the chain of command so everyone can see it, how I'm going to talk. Um, this is how I think it should work. Um, if I'm misunderstanding this correctly, Sanders, please let me know. Um, how it technically should work is anybody in the orange should be reporting to a corporal. The corporal should be going to a sergeant. The sergeant should be going to the lieutenant. The lieutenant to the captain. And then the captain to high command, depending on what it falls under. Um, like Sanders said, it's not that we're too good for you guys. We, we want to talk to you guys. That's why... That's why we'll offer PTS when we're in our offices. You guys are more than welcome to join the waiting room and say hi if we're not busy. Um, but we're doing so much behind the scenes work. Um, I'm trying, like I was trying to make that SOP test say, and I got pinged probably 17 different times from people. Um, so I'm having to stop what I'm doing to figure out what's going on, um, which is taking away from me getting stuff out to you guys which is going to hopefully make your time and jobs better and easier. Um, so yeah, please work with us. We're going to work with you. Um, just go easy on us. Me and Sanders are pretty busy people outside of um, WSP already. Um, so pretty much all of our free time goes to our administrative stuff. Um, so yeah. All right, cool. All right, let's jump straight into um, Hanks. If you don't have anything else to add, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and move you back to the audience. Yeah, that's fine. All right. And if at any time, um, we'll do kind of a little question suggestion thing here at the end. Um, I'm really going to try not to make this two hours. Um, but at the same time, we do have a lot of important things to go over. If for some reason something comes up and you need to go, you can always use the chat in here and just let us know. Um, it'd be great if you don't don't just dip out. So, um, one of the first things, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. A lot of these things, like I said, we're just going to pretty much demonstrate. We're not going to go through you guys actually doing it for time uh, constraint purposes. So, um, go ahead and share my screen here. I do have, um, I do have everything recording right now too, which will be uploaded to YouTube later, and then we'll keep it in, in the channel as well, so... All right, so the first thing that I really wanted to cover is um, locking your vehicles. Hopefully everybody knows how to lock their vehicle. If they don't, I'm going to go ahead and show you now. So one of the reasons this is really important is, um, for example, last night, some of you may know or may not know, um, me being a staff member as well, I'm you know, act active in cities sometimes flying around or on staff duty, so... Uh, last night I seen a situation where a WSP charger was stolen a few times um, and you know the criminals were just kind of tearing up the city with the car. I mean things are going to happen, you may forget sometimes, but let's try to make that a top priority that you keep your vehicle locked at all times. So I'm going to show you now how to lock your vehicle and what we're going to do um, when I went through like a 16 hour academy and then like 60 hours of FTO training in a server. Yeah, I had to, I had to sit on the computer for 16 hours in a, for a video game academy. I know, but um, honestly, it was really cool. It taught me a lot. I really enjoy law, and with me being a law school student, a lot of that stuff I learned um, in there was kind of applicable to to my life as well. So, um, what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna give you guys kind of a rundown here and show you how to lock your vehicle, and. What I was saying with that academy is when we went through that, um, there would be multiple times where an FTO or a command member would check to make sure that everybody's cars were locked. And if you were found to have your car unlocked three times, um, you would be you were pretty much automatically dismissed from the academy. So even if you sat there for 14 hours, went through all the training and everything, if you were found with your vehicle unlocked, you were dismissed. And the reason for that, again, is because it's it's super important so that somebody doesn't steal it so all right so what you're gonna do um, 
is going to go to personal vehicle and your vehicle related options personal vehicle and then it, you should be able to set it to um, the vehicle you have now I usually save all my cars just to make things a little bit easier um, and then what's cool is you can even add a blip and then that's pretty much about it so once you get out of the car you're just gonna double tap E to lock it and double tap E again to unlock it so over the next week or two um, possibly longer we the command team is going to kind of go around and do some door lock auditing so there may be some random times where you're on a traffic stop and we're just gonna pull up and check to make sure that your doors are locked so please ensure that you have your cars locked at all times this also includes like if you pull somebody over and you're going up to approach their vehicle in a traffic stop you should lock their vehicle now i understand that running back um running back you know it's going to take a few more seconds where you have to unlock the car but it's also going to pre prevent somebody from coming up and stealing it so um, can i add something to that yeah of course so another thing to keep in mind with that and it is unfortunately one of the downsides is that if you get too far away from your car for any given reason it will just decide to not let you unlock it anymore and I'll come up there Sanders and I'll kind of show them um, there is a trick to getting in the car after that um, you want to hop out and unlock your car so you have the person who's driving it go up to the uh, side door in the back if you want to walk up there and then you just go into your LEO menu, go to seats, put them in, uh, and then they can just rotate seats until they're back in the front seat. You then reset the car as your personal vehicle, hop out, and then you can unlock it again. Unfortunately, that trick only works on four-door vehicles. Hmm. Something to keep in mind with that type of stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's all that I needed to mention. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, well, it's something to, to think about, too. Like I said, we're, we're going to go around and kind of check some of your guys' cars at random times. So how we're going to do it is kind of like how how we dealt with when I was in an academy in another server. Um, so if you're caught with your car unlocked three times instead of just, like, getting terminated, because I think that's, that's, that's not really fair... Um, if you're found with your car unlocked three times, then you'll be issued a strike for each three times. So that's a pretty good, pretty good uh, open area there, and it's something to kind of always keep in the back of your mind. Um, another reason that you want to keep your car locked is um, you don't want somebody getting in the driver's seat and saving it so that they can spawn it for later. So not everybody has the Leo menu and access to the vehicles that we have without having the the spawn code for the vehicle. All right, so that is pretty much it. Um, another thing I wanted to cover is the plates. You should all be using the WSP plate. If you want to add WI or WSP before or after um, your call sign, that is fine. However, um, unless you're doing DCI or SR, well, even SRU, you really should have the call sign. But unless you're doing criminal investigations, then you should be using the WSP. Uh, plate and I would just use your regular number, you know, 523, 501, 554, whatever it is. And then that way, too, you don't have to include like WSP or WI. So this is a custom plate we have for our department. So let's let's try to use it. Okay, the other thing is um, I've noticed that our station is not getting used a lot, so we actually have two stations. So if we're doing AOP in the city, um, our station is in Rockford Hills. We have a WSP logo. It's right there by the courthouse. It has all of our logos, and it's pretty much for WSP. Um, if we are doing AOP in the county, which typically we are, um, then you should be using the Sonoran Freeway. Uh, WSP and that's not just 
going on duty or going off duty, you should be processing criminals there. I, I asked the development team to add locks into that station so that we could use it. We are our own department and we should be operating as such. So use that for everything. When, when you first load in, when you go off for the end of the day, when you're um, processing uh, and booking people, that should all, it, you should be using that for, for everything. So let's try to stop using the the Sandy Shores um, station, and we'll let we'll let County kind of take that over there. So really, there's no reason for you to be there at all unless I don't know you have like a terrorist and you need to get up to a station as quickly as possible. But we w we need to be operating as our own de independent department because we do things a little bit differently. We're going to do felony stops a little bit differently. We're going to do maybe traffic stops a little bit differently. Um, you know, which is also a reason why we, we have our own radio because we may call certain things differently. We, we have different policies and procedures that we follow compared to other departments. So while yes, we do assist them and we should be there to help them. Um, your main, your main goal and priority is, for for WSP, you know, in our own jurisdictions, following our own SOPs, etc. So, um, let's make sure we're using the WSP station. Uh, Sanders, real quick. Yep. Um, one of the PD guys just pulled up. I guess he wants to do a training right now too. He's asking how long we'll be taking. Um, honestly, we're just going, we can go to the other side of the, or oh, why don't we just get on the, um, Los Santos airport? Yeah, we could do that too. We and then we won't desync. Yeah, let's, we'll just all TP down to LSIA. I can, if it's easier for you guys, I can just, um, pull you down there to me. Spot. While we're going ahead and meeting, guys, um, kind of the same thing that Sanders was saying, though, about having different SOPs. Nobody else is going to know our SOPs other than us, most likely. So if another officer is telling you something that's not allowed in your SOP, don't be afraid to say, well, I'm I'm not allowed. That's, that's not in my SOP. Yep. 100%. That, that will happen a lot, too. So, um... All right, cool. Anybody have any questions about any of that stuff we've covered so far? All right. Next thing I'm going to go over is the radio. Obviously, you all know we should be using the um, R channel for RTO. However, um, in case you guys don't know how to scan, which everybody's scan should be working, but in case you don't, give me one second here, I'm not even in TeamSpeak yet. I'm going to show you guys, so other departments, what they'll do is, um, they'll be in their own channel, like I know MCSO at least, they'll be in their own channel, and then, um, channel switched, microphone sound muted. muted. And then uh, what they'll do is only have like their highest up at the time scanning other channels. However, what we're going to do to make things a lot easier is everybody should be scanning the other department channels. However, well, let me let me straighten this out. So the main reason for that is because I may be the highest on at the time, but I'm in the middle of a shootout. And then, you know, another cop needs help from another department somewhere else. I'm not going to have time to stop shooting this guy and switch over channels and be like, you know, dictating all that stuff back and forth as a dispatcher while I'm in an active scene. So everybody should be scanning. Um, well, I'm going to show you guys how to scan in case you don't know. Um, we're going to try to still keep like the higher ons like sergeants and such like that, um, things like that to be the main person switching over. However, um, it is there if you need it to, to switch over to another department to talk to them. So let me go through this with you a little bit here. Mine is already set up. So you're going to go to your scan list here. Um, make sure your scan is enabled. And 
what you're going to do is, let's say for example you want to add dispatch. So right now we're on dispatch. You're going to go back into your scan list and you're going to click the plus button. And that's going to add it to, let me just go ahead and get rid of these so I can go through it with you guys. So we're on dispatch right now, so we want to add dispatch to our scan list. So we're going to click the plus button. Now we're going to go to MCSO. We want to add MCSO to our scan list. So we're going to click the plus button. Now we want to add Milwaukee Fire, uh, which you guys don't have to add fire. It kind of helps, but so you're going to click plus for Milwaukee Fire. And then now we're going to go down to our station. Go back to scan list, click plus for WSP. And same thing for MPD, scan list, plus. So now we're going to be able to hear every department that we have added in here. However, whatever department is showing right here is what you're talking into, if that makes sense. So while you may hear MCSO and WSP, you when you speak, you're only speaking into MPD's radio. Um, when it comes to team speak, you don't switch like we have WSP, MPD, RTO, all that. You don't switch that. You have to stay and scan emergency services. So make sure you get you have you have that there. Um, and what I would do is I would keep everybody on scan, but stay in our department when you're talking. So, but if you hear like a 300 call sign or a 100 call sign, and they need assistance, then you would probably switch to one of their channels. You know, if if nobody else is higher up to help you. Um, at the moment, then you would switch to one of their channels and let them know that you're responding. This is going to prevent a lot of issues where depart, you know, ish things are happening, but departments aren't hearing each other. Um, I know this has happened a few times, so you know, make sure you're communicating and just keep in mind how how this works. Okay. If we don't have like two or three WSP on, then you can just stay in the dispatch channel, and then you're you're hearing still the private like. MCSO and MPD channels, but you're talking into um, dispatch as well. So everybody can use scan, and I would definitely encourage you guys to make sure that you have your scan activated at all times so you can hear other departments. Um, so I know like MCSO, they do pretty much operate as their own department, and they can, you know, pretty much only hear themselves. So if you're only listening to WSP, you're only hearing and talking into WSP, which is a issue sometimes when you'd need cross department help. All right, any questions about that? And feel free at any time, we do have the chat thing here and you guys can um, you know, raise your hand as well. I know we're trying to get through this, but I also wanna make sure you guys understand everything we cover, so. If someone is too loud in TeamSpeak or on your radio, the way to turn it down is in your actual team speak um, settings, just so you're all aware. Okay, cool. All right, no questions about that. Um, we're gonna go over the not so much fun stuff. So give me a moment here. I'm gonna switch my screen to the training manual. And then we will do a couple um, scenarios and demonstrations. I want to remind you all that I made a pretty pretty badass training manual, I mean if I say so myself. Although it is 61 pages, it really doesn't cover a lot of information. There's more details inside of um, sections than anything. But if you ever have any questions about use of force or what the continuum looks like, not only is it like you know in, the, in our new SOP, but it's also in the training handbook. There's pictures for dirt for different types of felony stops depending on where a, a, a wall is in location to where you are um, so just something to something to keep in mind um, all right let me switch my screen here you go over this training manual and you guys can pull up pull up the training manual um, and go through it yourself while we're while we're going through this but we're not going to cover everything in here just kind of the main points. Okay, so use of force. This has been a hot subject this last week. Um, so we need to make sure we all understand this. Keep in mind, 
you're not going to have a, an exact answer for every single situation, but when it comes to use of force, um, it's really important that you're able to make your own decisions. S sometimes situations arise, you know, different different things happen, and you have to make a split second decision. Um, for example, you know, let's say you're in the dark, and you know it's at night, and you're chasing somebody, and they they have a something that looks like a weapon in their hand. Let's say it's it looks like. You know, let's say in reality it's a taser, but you don't really know that. Um, you know, and they go to lift that up and turn around and shoot at you. Something like that would be justified if you for sure, you know, didn't know it was a taser. And even then, um, you know, it can become lethal at that point. So just a small, small example. Um, so I'm going to go over the use of force, the different subject classifications. So there's different types, which um, there's typically four different types. So you have passive compliant. And this is basically just saying that an individual who recognizes the authority of an officer who is complying with all verbal commands by the officer. So basically this is just you, um, this is just a, a suspect that understands that you're an officer and what you tell them they need to abide by. So obviously that wouldn't result in you needing to shoot them or even tase them as long as they're following your commands. Um, passive resistor is somebody who is still a little bit, um, more relaxed in a sense but they're they're kind of fighting you a little bit back on your verbal commands so um, it's basically an individual that refuses to follow all your verbal commands but does not resist attempts for an officer to apply physical control like you know holding their arm using pressure points things like that obviously in game you know you can't really use like pressure points and some of these soft hand techniques but um, just something to keep in mind you could always use slash me you know to make it a little bit more realistic so um, the next step we have an active resistor and this is an individual who, who refuses to follow all verbal commands and um, resists attempts from you as an officer to apply physical control and they do not attempt to harm but they do not attempt to harm the officer um, and then we have active aggressor which is an individual that will not follow any verbal commands and they resist any attempts for um, for you to apply any physical control and they're trying to harm you in using a weapon or punching or kicking you. So those are diff different just subject classifications. Um, now we're going to get into the use of force continuum. This one's a little bit different. There's different kind of uh, diagrams. I know Griffin has one that's a um, tells that shape even a the triangle or a yeah but it's an SOP what go ahead Griffin I don't use a triangle one I use that's from your SOP I use the one that I just posted in the chat it's a ladder that I use yeah yeah that's yeah that it's like a food group thing um but yeah there's different ones this this one's a little bit more the um the food group design is a little bit easier to follow but um, overall, it just kind of gives you an idea of, um, you know, different types of techniques, and this one's kind of like a whole damn circle here, but, yeah. Alright, so we're going to get into um, different types of use of force, so we have officer presence, and this is just basically you as an officer of authority with your uniform in a situation, that enough alone um, is, is usually enough to make people comply with the authority of an officer. However, if that doesn't work, um, then you do have verbal commands and orders. So, you know, giving verbal commands that are clear, understandable, um, and those directions to give by an officer aimed at a subject or individual. And this, these verbal commands are used to let the individual or, or potential suspect know that um, that is being directed at what their intentions that what are the intentions of the officer and what will happen if the individual refuses to comply with the, the command. So a few examples of this would be, um, you know, kind of a step by step here. So, sir, stop. I need to speak with you. Stop. Put your hands up or you will be tased. Police, drop the knife or you will be shot. So kind of just a different example. You don't want to go up to a lot of scenes. Um, and I know we're talking about use of force here, but even traffic stops in general, you don't want to go up and be aggressive um, or or let me put it this way a lot of times officers wonder why they get shot in game or why a traffic stop turns into a pursuit and shootout 
And a lot of times it's because of how they're talking or um, approaching the suspect. So not all the time, not all the time. They may be carrying drugs anyway or have a um, worn out. But just something to keep in mind, a lot of times the way you treat people is how how they're going to react to to how you treat them. So um, just something to keep in mind there. It's always kind of a step-by-step -step thing, which we'll get into like ask, tell, make here in a, in, in a second. Um, so earlier I mentioned pressure points, like soft, uh, empty hand techniques and soft techniques. So what I'm going to get into, um, like I said, is you can't really do these kind of things in game, but it's just always something to keep in mind. And some of you guys might be interested in law enforcement in the future and a lot of the stuff you will go over in training. So um, we're going to go ahead and cover it anyway. So we have soft techniques, um, which are, it's basically a low probability of causing um, soft connective tissue damage or bone fracture. So it'd be like pressure points, joint locks, things of that nature. Um, and then you also have hard techniques, which is um, more of a likelihood that connective tissue damage will will be caused so such as like punching kicking things like that um a few examples of like a hard technique too is using some of the weapons you have um not even weapons either but keep in mind you have handcuffs you have flashlights obviously in game we can't put put our handcuffs on our fist and you know hit them if needed um but like a flashlight you know that could be used as a weapon if needed so just things like that. All right. So difference between less lethal force and lethal force. So less less lethal force is a level of force that refers to the use of Im intermediate weapons to establish control. Um, examples of these would be like taser, pepper spray, batons, beanbag rounds. Um, like I mentioned earlier, your flashlight, um, handcuffs. I'm sure you guys can can think of other items that could be used as well. Um, when it comes to lethal force, this is more of like pistols, AR, uh, ARs, shotguns, things like that. And they're, they're, they're much more likely to cause serious bodily injury or, or even possibly death. Um, little note here, so if the level of force has been successfully employed on the subject, you must contact the supervisor. So make sure you guys are filling out your use of force reports um, in, in our Discord so that IA can... Um, investigate if they need to or they they may still anyways um, and then as we continue to grow and the court is open I will say that my cousin or brother or whatever whatever you want to say is a judge as well so um, make sure you guys are filling that kind of stuff out so that you have something covering your ass and you have a um, report of of what happened um, which I'm going to touch base on warrants here for a second. So warrant procedures, when it comes to warrants, make sure you guys aren't, you, you have to have somebody sign the warrant. So we do have judges that are available. Um, like I said, I have my, my cousin or twin, twin brother, whatever you want to call it as a judge. Um, and then we, we have the channel on discord where you can um, request a warrant as well. So Make sure you're, doing, you're going through the proper channels with that and you're not just signing them yourself or whatever it might be. All right. So, like I said earlier, um, this is something that you can always use if you prefer to go off of, um, you know, acronyms, then you can call this ATM. So it's called Ask, Tell, Make. It's basically a process um, that an officer should follow when it comes to interacting with the public. Obviously, you guys as officers are expected to be polite and courteous while interacting with civilians and subjects. However, an officer should not be afraid to use issue orders or carry out with the appropriate amount of force needed to make maintain control of a situation in short ask tell make model means officers should first politely ask the subject to follow the order rephrase the question as an order and then if the subject refuses and lastly make them follow your order if they can continue to resist so an example of this would be um uh if you walk up to once you walk up to a vehicle at a traffic stop good evening you know my name is officer da, da, da. can i have your life search proof insurance please well no why do i have to give it to you those circuit 
I, I pulled you over. Can I please have your license, registration, proof of insurance? Well, no. Okay, give me your license, registration, proof of insurance. Well, no, I don't need to. Okay, sir, if you don't give me your license, registration, proof of insurance, I'm going to have to get you out of the vehicle until we can identify you or who you are. So it's just kind of an example of that. Um, and this one written here is, um, you know, sir, please stop walking away from me. Sir, stop walking away from me. And then, you know, at that point you draw your taser. Sir, stop, in, stop walking away or you will be tased. And then still the subject refuses to stop. And then you end up tasing the subject. All right. So that is pretty much everything on use of force. Any questions regarding use of force? I know this, some of this stuff's kind of boring, but I promise it's helpful. And if there's something in here that, um, you know, you, you can't memorize or don't want to go back through the video, it's always posted here in, in the training manual. So never, never, uh, never guess, you know, always, always feel free to go back and prime example of um all right so we're gonna get into um reasonable suspicion versus probable cause so reasonable suspicion is a commonly used term in law enforcement it is regarded as being more than thinking a crime has been committed but less than probable cause so it refers to what a reasonable officer or a normal average law enforcement officer would consider suspicious. As with probable cause, reasonable suspicion is subjective to a law enforcement officer's discretion. Once established, it allows a law enforcement officer to hold someone briefly and frisk them for weapons. And then probable cause would be, um, you know, kind of going over here, the Fourth Amendment of the United States. The uh, Constitution protects citizens against unlawful detainment and unlawful searches of their property by requiring that Leos show probable cause before any arrest, search, or seizure can take place, with or without a warrant. And it's usually established when officers of the law have access to information that indicates that there is general probability that, number one, a person has committed a crime and needs to be arrested, a specific location serves as a crime scene and needs to be searched, a specific location holds evidence of a crime and needs to be searched. Items or property at a location have been stolen and need to be seized as evidence. Um, and then you can always follow that link here, and I think it takes you to one of the, um, yeah, one of the more improbable cause by uh, Cornell University. So, all right, cool. So, Miranda warnings here. Um, everybody knows Miranda warnings. Do they know? All right, give me a second here. I'm gonna pull. Mr. Hanks up here. What's up, Mr. Hanks? Hey, I just wanted to ask some. Uh, it's quite relevant, though, if it's all right. Yeah. Okay, so I was um, I was doing some like experimenting kind of before um, going back in the announcements on you know the main Discord for um, Badger State. Okay. Um, I see that Snipe added something called Star Chase. I want to know, are we permitted to use that? Because he said 2018 Chargers, Pursuit Vehicles, and some Explorers have it installed. I'm just wondering if we, like, if there's a policy on using that here or No, that's a really good question. Um, I know that we have it, but I honestly haven't experimented with it a whole lot. I know I've seen it before, because I think it's made by London Studios. I know when I wrote the new SOP standards, I pretty much, and we can change it obviously, but I put that I really only wanted pursuit units to use that because it's a specialized piece of equipment that the normal officer isn't going to really be trained on IRL either. Yeah, and that that's a good point. It may be something saved for like um, for speed enforcement or um, yeah, something along those lines. But we'll we'll definitely talk about it and decide how how that should be used. I would say for now, let's just hold off at least until we decide how how we want to use it. Because it is quite okay. dangerous, you know, once you lock that person's back tire, it's sometimes it can be more dangerous than a pit. And you want to make sure that you know how to use it properly, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I just wanted to ask that's all. Yeah, good question. Thank you.
All right, we got another question here. All right, so this is not particularly what you talked about it, but it's about um, the SFP about the motorbike unit. Um, I was informed by 559 that y'all did not allow the motorbike unit to pursue. Can I uh, make a suggestion towards that? Sure. All right, so if we were to change the... So if we were to change the SOP for that, and let's say a motorbike unit could pursue but can never take from it. What about that? Could what? Like a motorbike unit can pursue but cannot take primary and must be in the back. Do you do you know how fast our motorcycles go? Not fast, but they I'm go guessing. about eighty miles an hour. Oh. So that's one of the reasons for it. Um I honestly don't I know I made the MBU SOP, but I haven't looked at it in a minute, so I don't even know what it says regarding pursuits. Well, that's all I had. Thanks. Yeah, let me actually look here. Griffin, did you have anything to add on that? While well, I'm looking this up. I was just saying, I thought that's what our protocol already said, but I haven't looked at it in a while, like you said, so I'm not sure. Yeah, so the main... I know that the main reason for motorbike unit is to assist with um, accident scenes, help with traffic, and also, you know, they can conduct normal traffic stops, but that's really the main goal of a motorbike unit. Um, we do have one bike that goes a little bit faster, but obviously with them being primary or even secondary, they're kind of in a... It's a lot more dangerous being on a, on a bike, so um, you don't want to put them in a position to where you know, they can get hit or even wreck at really high speeds. So that's usually why we kind of reserve that kind of stuff for speed enforcement. Um, however, still let me look this up here. I made this, but honestly, I don't even remember. Yeah, we do have a section on pursuits. Okay. Allowed to engage in pursuit due to their agility and swiftness. Motor units are not allowed to perform any pursuit intervention tactics like pit maneuvers, of course. Um, not allowed to take over as primary, so it doesn't say anything about them not being secondary as far as the SOP. So they just can't be primary for obvious reasons, and they shouldn't exceed 145. So they can pursue that? Yeah, they just can't be primary. Oh, okay. Yep. Good to go. Okay, cool. Anything else before we move on to Miranda Rights? All right. Roop. Hey, so real quick. In the state of Wisconsin, uh, I live in Wisconsin, and bikes don't pursue uh, at all, and they don't pull over for reckless driving just because they are very like known in Wisconsin for just running if you get pulled over for reckless driving. So that's, I don't, I know that you guys say that you guys can pursue with the bikes, but further back, but in the state of Wisconsin, we do not pursue on, uh, on motorcycles. And WSP in Wisconsin doesn't even have motorcycles, only MPD does. That's correct. So I just wanted um, to let you guys, not, not you guys, but whoever asked that question about pursuits that they don't even pull over. In, 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 in real life, Wisconsin doesn't pull over uh, reckless driving. On top of that, our protocol only states that we will pursue for um, felonious activities. Um, so that's something else we need to cover. I don't know if you want to cover that, Sanders, because I see that a lot. We're getting into pursuits and also not calling for authorization either. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we're going to go over like pits and pursuits here in a bit. Um, that brings up a good point, Roop. As far as WSP IRL, um, we try to keep everything as realistic as possible. However, WSP IRL, they only have... Griffin, what the hell is the subdivisions? Um, honor Guard. I, mean, obviously, I did my research. Yeah, can you please elaborate on that? And th one of the reasons why we've expanded a little bit more so you guys have more opportunity than some of these other departments or the same at least. So Griffin's going to cover what IRL WSP has for subdivisions. 
So IRL, they have a patrol unit, they have DPU, which is Dignitary Protection, Honor Guard, Commercial Motor Vehicle Enforcement, SWAT, ASU. They have an MBU, actually. It was designed in 1957. And they have TRU, which is the Technical Reconstruction Unit. They have the MFF, which is the Mobile Field Force. And they have K-9. Right. So the point of going over those is to kind of like let you guys know we've tried to add some of these subdivisions We've while trying to keep it as realistic as possible. We've tried to add some, for example, the, the DPU. Their job is mainly, they're kind of like Secret Service. You know, they escort and protect um, the governor. So in, in game, we don't have like somebody that plays as a governor all the time. So there's really no need for that. Um, the mobile field force is like a riot control, basically. Um, Honor Guard... They're pretty much the people that, you know, show up to, like, uniforms and uh, funerals, I'm sorry, show up to funerals, help with escorts. Um, so a, lo a lot of that kind of stuff, IRL, is, I don't want to say boring, but um, it wouldn't make us very popular because why well, join WSP when MCSO has, you know, gang and drug narcotics and investigations and WSP IRL doesn't even have investigations. That's a completely different department. So... Um, that brings up a really good point, though, is, like, we've, while trying to make it as realistic to IRL as possible, we also want to give you guys an opportunity to do different types of things and have at least the same opportunity as other departments. I don't think we would have a whole lot of interest in, like, Honor Guard and DPU and Mobile Field Force. Maybe I'm wrong, but... <laughs> oh, and I do know that their air support unit, they do a lot of um, speed enforcement based, so they'll kind of like, they'll use their helicopters as, um, to help with speed enforcement, if that makes sense. So for those of you who are not from Wisconsin, um, on the interstates, they actually have um, white lines on the interstate and highways. So that the planes can actually time how much they're in between those lines, and that's how they can calculate speed if they can't radar the vehicle. And they do that by fixed wing and helicopter. It's pretty cool to watch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, if you guys are interested in, I know Jackson's running ASU as the air support unit. So um, if you guys are interested in that, why do I keep hearing like a drum and snare in my ear? Is that just me? Was someone shooting star chasers? I don't know who it is. I haven't found it out. I haven't found who it is yet, but I have one in my car, so I will find it out. Yeah, that that's kind of loud for um, the recording too. So let's not do that right now. We can mess with that a little bit later. Um, anyway, so yeah, if you guys are interested, Jackson's running ASU, and a lot of that with that department, you guys will kind of, um, you know, honestly just fly around and catch speeders and. Um, you know, do what ASU does with, with speed enforcement. So it's kind of always interesting. If you guys are interested in that, something to let you know. Um, and some of these subdivisions we may mess around. I've already kind of lowered the ranks required for some of them, uh, but we may go further and lower them a little bit more. That all, That is all dependent on the subdivision commander. So um, we do have a couple subdivisions open still also that um, we need commanders and heads for. So if you guys like those departments, you think you can do well, you think you can make SOPs, edit SOPs, make uniform vehicle structures, you're interested in that kind of stuff, and you want to show that you want to take the initiative for the department, um, you know, definitely let somebody know, and we'll, we'll do what we can to get you in those spots. There's no minimum rank over, other than the minimum rank required to be a commander in those subdivisions. Um, like, we have a, a sergeant that's the commander of K-9, but... You know, it could also be a master trooper. So there's really no, there's plenty of opportunities for that kind of stuff. Um, all right. So Miranda warnings comes from the Supreme Court case of Miranda v. Arizona, and basically, I just kind of wanted to go over when Miranda uh, warnings should be read, and um, the difference between spontaneous um, statements. So basically, if an arrest is issued on scene 
uh, or later during an investigation, the officer wishes to question the subject and use the statements in courts, then they must read their Miranda rights prior to questioning. However, uh, officers may arrest a sus suspect, question the suspect for a statement, and act upon the information gained without reading the Miranda rights if they do not wish to use the suspect's statements in court. It is not true that if you don't read them their rights, they can't be charged or um, their charges are just going to get dropped in court. You don't have to read them their rights. You only have to read them their rights if you plan to use what they say against them in court as evidence. So just something to keep in mind. If you want to use it as practice every time you detain them, if you want to go ahead and question them, that is fine. If you want to wait till right before you jail them, if you don't plan to question them or, or use any of those statements later, then you don't have to at all. However, if you don't read them their rights and they admit to something, um, you ask them a question and, and they admit to something, um, that information cannot be used. You can go back and re uh, you can go back and read them their Miranda rights and re-question them. However, um, that first time they answered it, it can't be used against them in court. Only that second time, if they answer it after you read them their rights, can it be used against them? If that makes sense. Um, so basically, it kind of goes over um, what should be read. Um, I know that we do have a script in game, if we still have it. I don't think we do. Anyway, you used to be able to do slash Miranda and it pulled up like a card, but basically, um, you know, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can always can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you by the state of Wisconsin. And then you can always ask them if they understand their rights. Um, if they say no, it doesn't matter and then you could always ask him too with your rights in mind do you wish to speak to me today that can vary um but the main point is to make sure you, they let them you let them know that they have the right to an attorney and they don't have to speak to you until um they have one if if they so wish so like i said it doesn't have to be verbatim it's it's different um things and if you don't know them you can actually reference this uh to miranda warning right here online all right, so like I said, if the suspect does not understand their rights, you can repeat them again in different wording. However, if um, the suspect attempts to slow down the investigation or otherwise stall by simply claiming they don't understand their rights, then you can inform them that they will receive a pamphlet with their rights stated upon booking and continue with your investigation. If they don't speak English, you can inform them that a pamphlet will be issued in their respective language. The suspect speaks and then continue with your investigation. Um, like I said earlier, when do rights need to be read? They're mainly um, when somebody is in custody or being interrogated. You should try to make that a um, good as good general practice. Um, these are known as circumstances triggering the Miranda requisites or safeguards. These are times where you may be asking general questions and a subject slips up and says something incriminating. That's why it's kind of important to try to read them before if you if you plan to ask them anything um and they only miranda rights only protect a subject during custodial questioning which is when someone is arrested or detained in handcuffs i.e like the subject is handcuffed and notified verbally that they are under arrest or being detained um okay so what kind of questions can you ask without advising the subject of their rights? They're only needed for interrogations. They don't protect the subjects from basic questions such as like name, address, date of birth, um, where you headed to, where are you coming from, things like that. Um, when they're not in custody, you know, like how much have you had to drink? Those are all kind of non-custodial, non-incriminating questions, even though they may further the suspicion needed for a field sobriety test. Um, if I interrogate someone without reading their rights, are they free to go? No. So failure to read the Miranda rights only means that anything self-incriminating before the point that you read them is admissible, like I explained earlier. Um, and then... So if a criminal confesses to a crime, these are known as uh, spontaneous statements. So let's say... This doesn't always happen, but let's say you pull somebody over and they're like, I just killed somebody and they're in my trunk that can be used against them um, that is one of the exceptions to the Miranda rights rule um, 
like I said, they're known as spontaneous statements, and they're incriminating in nature. That won't, that won't always happen, but um, criminals love to play the game. Well, I said that before you read me my rights, so I'm free to go, which isn't always the case. Now, while custodial interrogation... Well, um, custodial interrogatory situation should be under Miranda, a subject that confesses to a crime. Act without being interrogated, coach, or solicited is admissible for criminal charges in the subsequent court proceedings, also known as spontaneous statements, U.S. Code 3501. Admit, admissib, admissibility of confession state that confessions as defined... Um, shall be admissible in evidence if it is vol voluntarily given. So Miranda rights more applies to when you're questioning them and they're they're answering your questions, you saying something that is possibly incriminating. So just something to keep in mind. Is that ask, yeah? Go ahead. I'm can I, I'm going to ask a question if somebody gets the answer. I'm going to give a reward of some sort if you're good with that. Yeah. Does anybody know the first one to type this in is going to be the winner if they get it right? Does anybody know what it is called when you use things that are not admissible in court to try to to try to use it against them? What that would be called? There's a certain terminology used for it. Perhaps. So if you like illegally obtain evidence or anything like that, and you try to use it, what is it considered at that point? You guys know the answer. You can raise your hand, or you can put it in the chat here. Shoot your shot, Prophet. So if you obtain something through not going through the proper channels, what is that considered? Are you speaking of, like, in real life circumstances, or the game? In penal code. Or not um, in penal code. Does it have something to do with a co your rights? Constitutional rights? Not necessarily. There's a specific, um, term used. It's it's under the private search do doctrine. Give me a second. Uh, I know it's under the private search doctrine. That's all I know. Okay, we're going to let Sanders keep going, but if you get it, go ahead and put it in the chat, okay? It is not what you said, Jackson. Okay, you guys can keep putting in answers as I go along here. You can interrupt me, Griffin, if you need. Alright, so real quick, we're going to go over Terry Frisking and Searching, and then we're going to try to get some of these training practices done, because these are definitely going to be the most important, not the most important, I'll say, but um, a little bit more fun than going through this. So, um, Keep in mind, like we said earlier, there will be a somewhat tests on the SOPs and this training manual later on so make sure you're always referring to this um, and, and it's a lot of good information here so all right difference between Terry frisking and searching it is pertinent that an officer uh, understands the difference of a pat down compared to a frisk versus an actual search um, our objective is to ensure that constitutional rights aren't violated and that evidence located is admissible in court both fall under the confines of the fourth amendment but how they are implemented in the field are crucial so, um, pat down and frisking. The act of patting down or frisking someone, also known as a Terry Frisk, Terry v. Ohio, is strictly limited to when, number one, reasonable suspicion is present in the, in the regard that a person is suspected of a criminal activity, and two, there is reason to believe that the subject is armed. This search is limited to the search of an outer clothing and limited to the search for weapons. A pat-down is mainly just patting down the outside of the clothing, notice for any bulges, um, shapes of weapons, things like that. Um, we don't... There's a, a cool script with QB Core, however, we don't have it here. Um, so what you'll do is, you know, you can just say, 
pats outside of body, do I feel any bulges or anything that feels like a weapon when you're doing Terry Frisk um, with your slash me or slash me too, compared to like, you know, searches into pockets. Um, these are just a few examples of when to Terry Frisk and basically if the pat down does yield the presence of a weapon, then you can move beyond the outer clothing to remove the firearm from their possession um, during the, during the investigation. Um, now, additionally, an officer who, while frisking the, for the presence of a weapon, feels the presence of an object, that is considered contraband, and that may be seized as well. Now, when it comes to searching, um, the act of searching, which is probed for evidence, requires probable cause. This allows for a thorough search of a person or their property beyond what would normally be done during a frisk. So this is actually feeling into their pockets, um, things like that. Okay, cool. That's pretty easy there. Difference between Terry for instance and searches. Um, I'm not going to go into... You guys can look up the penal code and all that stuff um, on, on your own time. Even I still. Um, when it comes to laws, the one thing I will say is don't ever guess. Every state has its own laws. So, um, for example, I live in Indiana. So, even though I'm a law school student, I don't know a ton about Wisconsin laws. And that's why, for example, like, Lawyers have to take bar exams for each state. Um, so just something to keep in mind. If you don't know something, look it up first and make sure you know or ask um, before you charge somebody with something. So, All right, cool. We're going to get into the fun part here. Um, we're going to go over just a few things. We're going to go over a normal traffic stop, and then we're going to go over a, a felony stop, and then um, we'll talk, we'll wrap it up with, like, uh, pit speeds and a quick demonstration of a pit as well. So I'm gonna go back to share my screen. I'm gonna need a few um, volunteers here. Right, my shit's a little laggy as my recorder running. Um, if uh, a couple of you guys want to play as a suspect, I need at least one suspect for now. And I'm just gonna demonstrate. Oh, why is my... What's going on? Alright, I'm gonna steal Griffin's car. Alright, sorry about that. My Discord, my, uh, Discord here decided to update in the middle of that. Yeah, what is, uh, what's up, Roop? I'm just saying I could be a, uh, I could be a volunteer. Maybe. Yeah, cool. Can you actually go ahead and spawn, like, a random Civ car? My, uh, menu's yeah. not spawning cars for some reason. Alright. Um, so... We're just going to do a normal traffic stop, um, yeah. you know, where he just complies with everything, yeah, and we'll, is mine. You know is my truck? we'll go over everything real quick. That's fine. fine. There must be something wrong with the menu. Can you guys see if you guys can spawn a car? Any car? Um, when it comes to traffic stops, a few things to keep in mind and that are also in the um, training training handbook. Um, officer safety is of the utmost important, so be physically prepared for um, the exertion to perform effectively. Be mentally prepared, alert, and focused. Use flexible and ready to adapt to changes as they occur. And then also you can use the SCAN, S-C-C-A-N method, which is... Um, Seek continuously scan the exterior interior of the vehicle before and during a stop. 
Um, C stands for clues that indicate violations or danger. The other C stands for contraband or evidence. Arms, which is like weapons, and then narcotics, which is drugs. Uh, okay. All right. So this is gonna be gonna be a little bit weird with the car, but uh, okay, that's all right. Am I invisible for you? No, I can see you. All right, so we're gonna start at the point where. Um, Where you've already pulled the vehicle over, so we'll we'll go over this real quick here. You're not sharing your screen. Just let me know. Oh yeah, let me fix that. Know why my Discord decided to update in the middle of that? All right, Griffin's gonna be my dispatch. Um, some things are a little bit different with dispatch, but we'll we'll do it one way here. All right. Do you want me to be up there too, or no? Um. Yeah, actually, we'll go ahead and bring it up in this one. So that way everybody can hear you. I thought that was my car. Dude, my car is not spawning. I don't think anybody's cars are spawning. All right. So this is gonna kind of be like fully active. I might stop a little bit and explain stuff here and there. Um. But just to kind of give you an idea, I know we did this last training, however, you can never never practice this enough. So just a normal traffic stop where he complies, gives me all his information, all that stuff. So let's pretend also we have active dispatch, which hopefully we will hear soon. Oh, Morris says his are spawning. I don't know. It just wasn't working for me for a minute. All right, so we're going to do uh, 501 dispatch. Dispatch, go ahead. 501, show me on a traffic stop with a blue four-door ram, occupied times one, outside LSI hangar one. Dispatch, on you, Tim, six on traffic stop. If we do have active dispatch, it's probably a good idea to read them their plate. However, for practice and demonstration purposes, we're just going to go through this now. How's it going, sir? Good, how are you? Good. My name is Officer Sanders with the Wisconsin State Patrol. You got your license registration proof and shirts on you. Yeah, I did. Let me get you. You get it? Okay. Oh shit, they changed this. Why is that so damn big? I was gonna be, uh, that's new. Yeah, <laughs> see that card? It's like, it's up with that picture. Alrighty, sir. <laughs> Alrighty, sir. So the uh, the reason for the stop today is I caught you going 60 in a in a 45 back there. Is there any reason for that? No, no I'm just trying to get home. Long day at work. Okay. Um, well, I'm gonna go back to my vehicle. Before I go back there, is there anything on you or in the vehicle I should be aware of? No, I have nothing on me. Okay. Do me a favor. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. I'm gonna run your information. I'll be right back with you. All right. All right, so let's pretend he's a cop, so he shouldn't have a record. Um, we're gonna run his information. Everything comes back good. Um, don't forget too, this is Griffin's car. That's why the only reason I'm not locking it. But make sure you're locking the car in between getting in and out. All right, sir. I'm gonna go ahead and give your information back here. Um, do me a favor, just slow it down. I don't want you speeding and get in trouble. I'm just gonna issue a written warning today. Alright, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, if you will, go and sign here. It's not an admission of guilt. It's just saying that you got a copy of this. Do you have any other questions for me? No. Okay. Wait till I get back to my vehicle, shut my lights off, and you're free to go. Alright. 501 dispatch. Send it. 501, show me code 4 after that traffic stop. Be 10 6 for paperwork. Warning issued. Okay, right. I'm you 10 6 on paperwork. Alright, cool. Um, real quick, I'm going to show with this car. Basically, when if you notice when I'm standing at the vehicle, you need to be about right here, which is that 
I can never with, forget, remember what that's called. It's B pillar, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to be right at the B pillar right behind it. Um, you don't want to be standing here or right here. That makes it easier for them to pull up the gun and turn towards you. At least if you're right here, it's harder for them to reach up and turn around back towards you. Um, when I'm headed back to my vehicle after I um, issue the the warning or citation, citation or whatever it might be, I always tell them, um, wait till I get back to my vehicle, shut my lights up, then you're free to go. However, let's say, um, you know, my car's right here and you're walking back to your car. Let's say you're like right here and they go ahead and take off. It's not worth it to chase them down. If you're still right at the side of the car and they, they run over your foot or something, then that's an issue. Um, but the main reason is just safety for them and yourself. They, you want to make sure you get back to your car before, before they take off. However, it's also not, um, yeah, I appreciate that, Rube. It's also not a big deal if, like, you know, you're right here and, and they take off. It's not worth chasing them down. Um, yeah, anything else? So, if you will notice, too, what I did first is I introduced myself. This is a preference. I would recommend against it. I never use my rank. If I go up there and say I'm Colonel Sanders and they know our ranking system, or if I say I'm Sergeant Sanders, everybody knows what a sergeant is, they're going to usually use that against me in one way or another. Um, so I usually always just say officer or trooper. You really shouldn't use your rank when you're introducing yourself. But the first thing I do is um, I, do, I give them a salutation like good evening or good morning or whatever it might be. My name is Officer Sanders with the Wisconsin State Patrol. Do you have your license or can I have your license registration proof insurance, please? Before I even tell them why they're being stopped, I want to be able to identify them. That way, if for some reason they take off, um, it's, it's easier to get that information in the beginning rather than later on. I don't typically, um, this is also a personal preference, but I don't typically ask them, do you know why I pulled you over? It's kind of redundant the question. Um, you pulled them over. So you should just let them know why you pulled them over instead of saying, do you know why I pulled you over? It's kind of setting yourself up for that, that kind of question there. So, um, yeah, just something to keep in mind with that. So I usually will introduce myself, get their information, and then I'll go ahead and let them know, hey, I stopped you for this reason. And then I'll give them an opportunity to explain or I'll say, is there any reason for this or, um, you know, whatever they might say after that. Um, when I go back to my vehicle while I'm running their information, I usually tell them, hey, keep your hands on the steering wheel. You don't always have to ask, hey, is there anything on you or in the vehicle I should be aware of? Any guns, weapons, knives, drugs? Um, but it is kind of a good idea. That way you know what you're dealing with. Um, and you can also do like slash me, you know, looks inside vehicle. Do I see anything illegal or you know, whatever it might be. And then they it kind of increases that RP and gives them an opportunity to re respond with something that you might not physically be able to see. So that's kind of the most important things. Um, you know, standing right here, letting them know, hey, wait till I get to my vehicle, shut my lights off, then you're free to go. And it's more so the, the steps there. So introduce yourself, citation, get their information. Um, the ask tell make kind of goes into, let's say I say, can I get your license registration proof insurance, please? And they say, well, no, I don't have to give it to you. And then you can get into, give me your license registration proof insurance. And then if they're still not, you know, then that's when we get into, all right, you need to step out of the vehicle. Um, you can also use the case law Pennsylvania v. MIMS, which more or less, I'm not going to go into full detail on it, but it basically allows, um, you guys all should have went over this in your, in your interview questions. Um, Pennsylvania v. MIMS pretty much gives the officer an ability to um, control the movements of a driver during a traffic stop. So you can ask them out of the vehicle at any point in time. Same with the passenger. Um, that's Marilyn V. Wilson. But that always kind of shuts them up is like, well, why do you, why, you, you can't make me get out of the vehicle. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, sir, Pennsylvania V. MIMS, you know, allows an officer to control the movements of a driver. I need you to get out of the vehicle until I can identify who you are. Don't ever mock them. Don't ever raise your voice at them unless you don't even want to raise your voice. You want to be more firm and and controlled in what you're telling them to do. Um, mocking them, getting upset yourself, it's not going to help help the decision at all. So, um, and some of you guys might see it too, but the chat here 
Griffin's put a, putting a lot of good information in there, so um, you guys can always look that up a little bit more. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to law. I, I love it. That's why I'm going into it. Um, but if you guys are interested, you can always kind of look up those case laws a little bit more. Uh, and then Marilyn v. Wilson, like I said, is um, the same, but that applies for the passengers in a vehicle. All right, cool. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Roop. For do you want to? Um, if you want, you can go ahead and stay there, and then me and Griffin, and I'd really like to have Hank. Hank, are you flying back in? Because I'd really like to have you for a felony stop. If you guys have any questions, uh, comments, concerns in the meantime while we're getting this set up, go ahead and ask. I'll just load them. Okay, cool. I crashed, that's why. Alright, no worries. Let me see if I can actually spawn a car now. Yeah, I still can't spawn a car, so I'm gonna have to steal. Don't switch your pet either because it'll make you invisible and invisible for myself. Oh shit, look at that. Butler, Butler, you locked your car! Where is it? Oh, this person didn't. Who's this? Hey, listen, I crashed the uh -huh. peso. Uh-huh. That's, that's not my car. Uh, where are we? Are we? Yeah, this is kind of moved a little bit. Alright, Griffin, if you don't mind, I'm going to have you be number two guy. Well, you can put your car where you want to. Am I going to be complying or am I going to be a dick? No, we're going to have you comply. Um, okay. If... We can have Smith. If you want to be um, Roop's passenger, that would be great. And if um, if Prophet, if you want to be the third passenger, that's fine too. It's always good to have an extra, a few extra people as suspects during the yeah, film. Yeah, this may not may not work. I am like dying hardcore right now. You're what? Yeah, I think we need a server restart. To be honest, I'm losing textures too. Yeah, there's some mm, going I'm, on. I'm barely moving. Who was just in this Tahoe? What Tahoe? This, the one behind us. Me. I don't you see me? you. Yeah. Huh? You're invisible. <laughs> Nobody's driving. <laughs> yeah, no. People, peep, um, my, my pet isn't working either. Sanders. What in the hell is going on right now? What a, Gosh, probably broke the what a night to be messing up. Let's come here. I want to test him up. All right. Can you feel um, this? Smith and no, dude. I don't even see you. I'm punching you on my eyes. That is weird. Just... Um, Smith and Rip, are you guys good at least so we can just run through this real quick? Yeah, I'm chilling. I'm in the driver's seat. I don't know if you okay. can see me or not, but Smith, if you want to go ahead and hop in the truck. All right. Um, for some reason, we can't see Hanks, but. I'm the I'm the ghost. Yeah, we'll we'll do. Hanks, where are you? I, I see Hanks. We'll do the best we can here. I don't know. He's not showing on my eyes, so for some reason. I'm a ghost. All right, we're gonna go through this real quick. Um, again, this is all in the training manual, and it shows there's different times. Um, like let's say, for example, the wall is like right here. Right, we're not gonna be able to to set up how we are now. So, um. Once, so this is the basic structure of what the vehicle should look like. You, you've you probably seen the felony stop with the two cars um, behind the suspect vehicle. However, this one's a little bit different um, because the third vehicle is parked to um, sideways like this. Anybody that hasn't gone through a felony stop training with me, do you, any of you know the answer as to why that third car is parked like that? Block traffic. Ugh, thanks, you cheater. Yep, it's to block traffic. Always. Um, now, if we had a fourth vehicle, it would be parked up ahead on the opposite lanes of travel to also block traffic. And if we had a fifth vehicle, it would be parked about 200 yards back um, to help block traffic from a farther point of view than right here. We've actually tested this. Um, me and Bill did when he was here. And I yeah, know, Hanks did the lesson. He just wanted to steal the spotlight from everybody so um but yeah we've <laughs> always <laughs> we've practiced this so let's say you had three cars lined up here right with locals and everybody else if somebody slammed into the back everybody would be massively injured 
Now, I'm not I'm not saying that parking the car this way is going to prevent um, everybody from getting injured, but it's definitely going to help. So something to keep in mind. Um, we've tested this ramming into this this third car back here. Definitely definitely helps um, keep everybody everybody safe. All right. So from this position, I'm going to act as primary. If I can get my doors to stay open, I'm going to act as primary. Griffin's going to be secondary, and Hanks is going to be um, tertiary. And Hanks is going to be standing right here. You can't see him on my screen, but he's third, so he'll be standing right here. Griffin becomes number two, and I become number one. So my main goal is keeping my gun pointed on the driver in the left back side of the vehicle. Number two, which is Griffin, is in charge of um, the passenger and the right back side of the vehicle. And number three is going to be in charge of taking everybody into custody. So we're going to do this, like I said, with them complying, just to kind of go through it once. Um, and then we'll go through pits really, really quick. All right, driver... Uh, Hold on, give me one second. Driver, passenger, keep your hands on the steering wheel. Keep your hands on the dashboard. Um, you can go further into this and say, driver, with your left hand, open the outside of the door. You can do all that, but for game purposes and to speed everything up, we're going to do it quickly. So, Driver, step out of the vehicle, face away from us. With your hands up, sorry. Go ahead and put your hands up for me. Yep. All right, sir. Look through your eyeballs. Step backwards towards the sound of my voice. Take two or three steps back. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Stop. Take three or four steps to your right. Now, from this point, he's out of my view. So Hanks is as number third is going to tell him where to go until he gets in front of Hanks. Mhm. Mm Carry on walking to the right until I say stop. Stop. Never go up to the suspect. Always have the suspect oh. walk back towards you. Yeah. Behind that door. Um, so let's, you know, let's pretend he cuffs him, searches him, and then puts him in, in his car there in the back. Pew, pew, pew. There we go. Now we're going to wait till number three, Hanks, is back in position, and he's going to say number three is ready. Number three is ready. Passenger, step out of the vehicle with your hands up, face away from us. Same thing with the passenger. Passenger, look through your eyeballs. Step back. About three more steps. Keep coming, keep coming, stop. Now number three is going to take over because he's out of my view. Yep, walk to, walk right until I say stop. I'll sidestep right. Stop. Oh, that was a bit too fast. Alright, walk backwards until I say stop. Slowly. Stop. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, it searches him, puts him in the okay. car. Um, the whole point of then three is going to let us know when he's back in, in his spot. Yep, three ready. Okay, now from this, um, it makes things easier than calling everybody by name because really, um, in the beginning, I was kind of pointed away from the left side of the vehicle, but I should be pointed there at all times while Griffin number two is always pointed at the right side of the vehicle. Um, so from this point, we're going to ask, is there anybody else in the vehicle? If there's anybody else in the vehicle, make yourself known now. If there's anybody else in the vehicle, make yourself known now. All right, from this point, we're going to tell three to go to two. So Hanks is going to go where Griffin is, and two is going to come to one. So Griffin's going to come to my left shoulder. Oh, we're not doing that yet. I'll fight this. <laughs> And it should be a smooth motion, so once Hanks gets to where uh, Griffin is, or three gets to two, then two will roll over to my left shoulder. And then when two gets to my left shoulder, he's going to let me know. Three, I'm, I'm here. Three in position. If you notice, one of the biggest things about this is communication. You don't need to worry about where everybody else is at. They should be telling you where they're at. Yeah, I think, I think Griffin died. Did Griffin died. Hello, number two. Yeah, Griffin died. He's deafened inside the meeting. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. 
then let's say let's say Hanks is two for now, and then Griffin's where number three is. Hanks, come to my left shoulder. So you're you're number two now. So mm -hmm. Hanks is gonna roll back behind the cars to my left shoulder, and then he's gonna let me know when he's there. Number three in position. Okay. Now um, he's gonna. We're gonna let each other know when we're ready. We're gonna roll out. We're gonna try to stay shoulder to shoulder, not cross over each other as we as we approach the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Get ready. Roll out. What the fuck are you, Hanks? My left shoulder. My left shoulder. Uh, I'm on your left shoulder. I'm invisible. Remember? Oh shit! I forgot. All right. Well, he's <laughs> on my left shoulder anyway. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to approach the vehicle. I'm going to look at the back. He's going to look at the front. Since this has a bed, we're going to look in there as well. Um, then Hanks is going to get in the vehicle. Typically, if you if it's not a truck, you're going to have him pop the trunk um, Do it anyway. when not? they get in the vehicle. So. All right, wait for let me in the vehicle. Okay, nice. It will let me in. It's all good. You, you searched it and everything. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Any questions about felony stop? Keep in mind, if like the walls right here, the vehicles are going to be positioned a little bit differently. But that's all laid out in, in the handbook. I don't, I don't want to see you doing a three car across. This this part of the training, there's a little things here and there like if you don't want to use your rank when introducing yourself, things like that. Those those kind of things, you know, are um, at your own discretion. Not felony stops. They need to be done this way. I'm gonna relog real quick. My game. Yeah, you're good, man. Um, that is pretty much about it. I wanted to go over pits and pursuits, but mainly just make sure you're not pitting at over 50 miles an hour. And, um, I mean, we could, we could run one pit test real quick as I run roof over. Smith, you want to grab a car real quick and I'm going to Yeah, I can't, even, I can't even exit on my game. It's broken. Yeah, there's definitely something going on tonight. All right, we'll do one quick pit and then we'll we'll wrap it up here for you guys. I didn't. You no, know, I've never been. I've never done a pit. You have it? On patrol. I've never done a pit on patrol. Oh, I've I never had the chance. I can't see you. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do this at normal speeds. Let's say, um, actually, let's just yeah, let's go right here on the open air field or airstrip. Okay, so we're gonna do this at like thirty or forty miles an hour. So that way we have plenty of time, and I can just kind of show you the process. Keep in mind there is desync. Not everyone's going to be perfect, but just to kind of give you an idea. Um, typically, you do want to try to ask a supervisor if we have one in our own department um, permission to pit. But um, you also don't want to pit right away. And when it comes to pursuits, make sure you, make sure you're pacing and chasing the suspect, not racing the suspect. Keep your distance in between vehicles. If you're right up on somebody, when they slam on their brake with with desync as well and, and ping issues you're gonna smack right into them and that's gonna cause a lot of issues so make sure you make sure you're keeping your distance with other cars it's not about who's gonna pit them or who's gonna be first or or anything like that even speed enforcement with our speed enforcement anyway that i can speak for our department we ask permission to take over you're, you're not just gonna say oh i got the fastest car i'm gonna take over here so just something to keep in mind all right whenever you're ready smith All right, so we're gonna try to get in a line position here. Um, he's just gonna drive in a normal straight. Obviously, they're a little bit different sometimes, but just to show you what it looks like. You want to try to line your car up with his, then you want to gently just push right into his car and follow through the the pit. Cool. All right. One well, one thing to add: most people will just drive off from that, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's true. They'll, <laughs> yeah, they'll probably keep going, but you know, at least you're doing your job. Um, all right. Any questions regarding anything we've covered? I know sometimes it's hard to get a hold of command, so now is your time. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to ask. I'm happy to go through it. Okay. Hope you guys don't have anything. Um, those of you that were at the training, um, just keep in mind we, we keep a tally of everybody that was here and everybody that was um, active so that that 
those kind of things come into consideration and come into consideration with promotions. One thing I did want to add is that um, Hanks has not even been here a month. He started out as a regular officer in MPD, and he's now a lieutenant. So if you put in the time, if you take initiative, if you um, if you do your job, you you will go far here. We've got a lot of spots that need filled. Our our O3, our last O2 is gone, so we we still got a lot of lot of good high command spots that that need to be filled. So what he's trying to say is I'm perfect. No, he's not. <laughs> hey. So, Hanks did, I did a thing with the FTOs, and um, I said whoever did the most ride-alongs could do, you know, uh, wear a relaxed uniform and uh, drive a ghosted car for the week, and uh, in that in that week he did five, um, and then he also did like six or seven interviews, so that's another reason he's the interim HR director. If you guys are interested in interviewing, um, writing demotion and termination letters, things like that. I, I would encourage you to apply to HR. Um, if you're not the minimum rank required now, you know I'm sure we can always look into that. That's that's that would ultimately be up to Hanks. I think the main thing is that it's usually higher up because there's a lot of um, confidential information discussed there. So yeah, uh, and I also encourage you guys to apply to subdivisions. Um, I know SRU, you're allowed to apply at, at probationary trooper. Um, same with, um, yeah, we, we've got, I got all the rest of these subdivisions and SOPs done this week, so. Um, when we get out that new SOP, make sure you're looking over that. Make sure you guys are always checking on the training manual as well. If you don't know something to ask, follow your chain of command, please. Please follow your chain of command. And that's about it. All right, cool. Well, any questions about anything? Any last-minute questions, comments, concerns?